in the Macmillan. Um, so this is picking up uh, right where Maggie left off. This is a um, plan we've been working on today uh, that really starts to apply the form-based code um, to this site using all the information that was presented here in the, the synopsis of our meetings and, and discussions with you all and with the uh, form-based code team. Um, and so this is implementing the, those different T zones that we've been talking about the last few days. Um, again, Ed, who's our uh, economist here this week, he's been um, encouraging us to, excuse me, think about main streets that are a little bit smaller, a little more compact than what they might have been in the past because we don't have the population in our communities that we once had. But we also want to allow for that maybe to expand to that in you know, 20, 30, 40 years from now. However, today we want to plan for something that's a little more condensed. So as Maggie was presenting, we're seeing this area, sort of the, the downtown, if you will, for, um, for your neighborhood. Um, and so what this looks at is a more urban condition um, that, that repeats and reinforces what's here today. Um, we analyzed some of the available sites and some of the sites that were up here vacant and, and, and that we know are sort of um, available for development and are proposing some inbuilt conditions that reinforce the, the urban fabric. Um, and what we see here primarily along the street um, are retail spaces on the ground floor with apartments above or, or flats above. And that's, that's right in our, our T5, T6 zone. Um, uh, one thing to point out uh, within this block, this is currently where the Kroger stands. Uh, in discussions with you all the other evening, um, you know, we, we heard that there's a feeling that that might go away due to the, the incoming Clifton store. And, and maybe that this is an opportunity to redevelop this block, internalize the parking, and create a more urban uh, space. It would probably, you know, you still would need some sort of grocery of some sort, but maybe it's a smaller market and, and includes possibly a little farmer's market or something. So we've, we've thought about that um, going to more of an urban condition. Um, and to reinforce some of the apartment buildings that you have on your blocks, we've, we've looked at new apartments. Again, bringing the population to your main street so that you get more people that can walk to, um, to the retail that's happening on these streets. Um, to support that, um, you need places for people to park. Um, we've looked at, we've got quite a large block here. Um, we looked at a central sort of parking garage uh, for this block and then also one to the south. Um, the way we were able to do um, more parking down here is, again, Maggie mentioned um, Curtis Street actually runs about in this alignment today. So what we're looking at is, is pushing that down. It actually would realign with um, Cross Lane, which starts here and runs straight through. It actually would cross um, Gilbert and we would turn it into uh, a nice little terminus building here across just visually. Uh, stopping that view, but the idea is to create a, a deeper development block so that these uh, re retail experiences along the uh, your main streets actually have more capacity for parking. Um, and then in the new street that's created, um, we're showing what would be apartments or maybe some townhouses that front that and create a new neighborhood street along these edges. Um, that also shows on there, Brian, sorry, um, um, in this case, St. James Street being re-extended up to McMillan as well. So the idea that those two new blocks that are formed are, you can walk around them and it funnels people right into McMillan. Um, and as we move west of Gilbert, uh, Maggie mentioned earlier this idea of creating a sort of central space, a gathering space for your community. Um, we feel that this is a, a, a perfect place for that to occur. It's sort of a nexus point. There, there is some, uh, there's an, the Paramount building and some other good architecture that's already here. This could be um, a great place to start to frame up a new center for your, for your town. And we've shown it in green. It could be more of a hardscape, more of a plaza type experience. Um, but this is a, a place where you do some, some you know, community events. Um, it might also be you know, a place where um, some of your public transit meets. Um, but we, what this would allow us to do is to do some new development on some, some of the parcels around it and really frame that, that new space. So it really signifies the, the center of your, um, of your community. And then once we uh, start moving westward from there, as, as was presented earlier, uh, we see this as sort of a, 
the zone, and also eastward too from this point, um, where you start to get a, a, a mix of things. It's not always retail on the ground floor or offices on the ground floor. There's, there's apartments, there might be some townhouses that, that are set back a little bit from the street. It's not as um, urban. Uh, there's some front lawns and those sorts of things. So this reinforces more of a, a, a residential feel um, as you go westward from, from this point. You can show the perspective up there. Yes. So this, uh, this is a, a perspective that one of our illustrators worked up. Um, tomorrow night we'll have this in color for you. Um, and you're welcome to come up and look at this afterwards. It's probably a little hard to see from, from your distance. But this is a view of uh, McMillan. If you were standing here looking uh, eastward, this is the, um, the, the old firehouse right here. This is what we're calling Firehouse Row, um, this collection of uh, vacant uh, lots. And so that view is, is taken looking um, eastward on that block. And it, you probably can't see it again, but you can see, see when you get up close that we're looking at uh, more residential feel. There's little front stoops, um, a continuous sidewalk with some plantings in front. Um, and then on this side, potentially maybe a corner store or something. So there, there is some of those, uh, those retail or, or maybe an office uses, but it's not consistent. Um, and, then, and then we looked at maybe some infill pieces that start to uh, re reinforce the idea that Maggie talked about, where you're rebuilding um, some of the neighborhoods with some infill, uh, whether they're uh, townhouses or single family uh, uh, lots going in. Do you want to talk about the little alley reefs too? Yes. Um, another, another idea we had when we were looking at this um, very interesting uh, piece of land here where there's a lot of oddly shaped buildings, um, but yet when we got into some of the, uh, the photographs and um, we visited the site uh, on Monday, um, we thought that this could be a very interesting place, kind of a funky place for um, what would be like a hardscapes um, uh, uh, pedestrian zone. Um, you see this in a lot of um, cities today where this is sort of the uh, kind of the funky place. Um, that uh, draws small retail or um, cafe spaces, um, studios, studios, a gallery, um, and uh, the vision that we had for that was was this this image here, where you get these really tight spaces that could be lit with uh, interesting lighting above, um, and it could also have nightlife. In this case, uh, we were looking at a little little outdoor bar scene, um, but these spaces are often because they're. Um, they're smaller, they're, they could be easier to rent, um, and often if it includes you know, art, you will get some artists in here and maybe do some little studios. Um, we thought that this could be a very interesting pedestrian linkage that um, sort of grows from the new extension of Cross Lane and then would tie into your, your square here. So it creates a, a nice little pedestrian linkage um, through there. Um, so with that, I think we're going to turn this over now to Rick and Wayne, who are going to talk about some of the transportation 